So the reason that I wanted to get an update from you is there are stories about Austin Energy um, getting yet another deal on solar solar power that is ahead of the curve or, or cutting edge. Uh, what can you tell us about that? That's correct. Uh, as part of the climate protection and generation plan that was adopted by council uh, in December, uh, we issued a 600 megawatt RFP for solar. Uh, this was based on the good response that we had on the 150 megawatt uh, request, which was under $50, which was really uh, world news making when we did that. Uh, we issued the 600 megawatt RFP and received over 8,000 megawatts of responses. And uh, the bottom line was that some of those were under $40 a megawatt hour. Many were clustered between 40 and 45, as you might imagine, which is four cents a kilowatt hour. Okay, so how does that compare to uh, electricity from coal or, or gas or nuclear? Well, our coal plants run between 40 and $45 a megawatt hour. Uh, and we also have a share of the South Texas nuclear plant. And depending on whether it's being fueled or not, which, you know, is a six week to two month process, which brings it down for, you know, a, a sixth of a year, uh, it ranges between 40 and 44, $45 a megawatt hour. And of course, natural gas, uh, even at $3, so it's probably trading at 285 or 290 today, but even at $3, natural gas through a combined cycle will be closer to uh, $60 or six cents uh, through natural gas through a um, simple combustion turbine, which is what you use in Texas in the late afternoon to, to meet peak. Uh, those are still gonna be in the 70 to $90 range. And we've got some peakers actually that run in the $160 range. Our very first major solar project, when we put in our first Weberville project, uh, it came in at $160 a megawatt hour. And at the time, that was the best price for solar uh, ever heard. So the prices have gone down significantly in the last five years. And now we're seeing prices, you know, in the between 40 and 45 and some prices actually below 40. OK, so break that out. Uh, a lot of people might not understand what is peaking power and why it's important and what what uh, the advantage is for solar there. Well, uh, in old utility parlance, and I, I apologize for using it, but basically you have your nuclear power plants that you run all the time because you can't turn them off. Uh, uh, you have your coal plants, which you can run up and down some, but you can't just turn them off. And then utilities also have what's called combined cycle units where you have a combustion turbine and com connected to a steam turbine and those are called combined cycle. And then the last fossil fuel that you add or technology that you add is the, is the peaking unit, which comes on sometimes for maybe an hour or two a day, because here in Texas, of course, we have a peak that occurs between four and six o'clock. Uh, our peak is almost 3000 megawatts and we hit it for an hour or two and that's when you're making your most expensive generation in order to meet that peak because, you know, um, if we have a 3,000 megawatt peak, we could have very easily have a 1,000 megawatt uh, cool evening. So the ratio is from 2 to 1 to 3 to 1 from day to night. So solar hits those peaks pretty well, and the competitive edge is that uh, it, it really, it's, it's not competing uh, generally against the standard coal and the nuclear plants. It's competing against that very expensive peaking power, am I correct? That's correct. Uh, you know, a lot of people who want to uh, uh, speak negatively about solar say, well, actually, it misses the peak by just a little bit. And because the sun begins to go down, uh, and, uh, you know, begins to get into the western sky at six or seven o'clock. But one of our strategies, of course, is that we, we have our solar plants uh, five to six hundred miles west of us. And then we pick that allows us to pick up the longitudinal gain of the fact that the sun it's in a different time zone almost literally, 
And so therefore, it does match peak very nicely. How is this different from uh, the solar that we hear about, say, from uh, Solar City or uh, Sungevity or some of these other uh, big companies that are um, uh, putting putting solar on on individual rooftops? That's that's not what you're talking about here. Not on these big big purchases, but we have a very we've had a very active plan in our distributed solar. Um, we are up to uh, about 50 megawatts right now of this of what we call local solar, which includes some uh, includes the Weberville project and it also includes our rooftop projects. We are pushing we're pushing that envelope as much as we can, uh, and it is a uh, you know solar on your roof is now you know what I always use the word parity you know. It is roughly at retail parity right now, which means you can put solar on your roof at 10 or 11 or 12 cents. Uh, we happen to be a, a, a very cost-effective utility to where we act, our rates are at about nine and a half cents. So if you're any place like California or perhaps where you are, Peter, uh, where you've got 11 or 12 cent rates, then solar is now at parity, solar on the rooftops, and it does do uh, uh, 95% of the job. When you say 11 or 12 cents, you're talking about the, the price of electricity for, per kilowatt hour. Correct. Yeah. So, so basically, you're, you're saying that solar on the rooftops uh, of, of, of a properly situated house is now competitive with buying that electricity on the, uh, from, from the utility as we normally do. Right. That's the reason the solar cities of the world are getting ready to have a very, very bright future.